Sean Duppy joins us for this episode of What's Next. Now, Sean is the global VP for security at GoToMarket at NTT. Been around for a long time, uh, more than 23 years in, in the ICT sector. And uh, Sean, you've been with Dimension yeah. Data since 1999. And it, it's quite yeah. extraordinary uh, what we've seen just in the last two to three years with what's happened with security and how how important yeah. uh, you know uh, cybersecurity has become globally. It is the biggest risk yeah. to businesses today. When you look at it, and yeah. firstly, Sean, it's good to see you. And, and uh, are you well? I'm all very well, Aki. Uh, like I said, a uh, few challenges we've got at the moment, uh, but uh, I suppose technology is pulling us through them. But it's great to be it's great to be with you. Um, I think also, like you said, you know, cyber security is one of the biggest threats. But um, I've always seen security as probably also the biggest enabler of business. So I like you know see the the sort of positive uh, impact that security can have. Um, on business, even though, you know, it's also one of the biggest threats. But I think, you know, if we invest in it in the right way, it also becomes the biggest in- enabler. No, absolutely. But, I mean, let, let's dive in deeper into that. And, and you're quite yeah. right in it being an sure. enabler. When you look at the, the, the security landscape over the last, say, three years, I mean, what what do you, what, what in your eyes has changed in, in terms of how yeah. the attackers approach, uh, you know, organizations and attacks over yeah. the three the years? I mean, we've certainly seen the guys becoming a lot more sophisticated. They're doing things differently. And in many cases, they're bypassing traditional security that was in place. Yeah. 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 So I think uh, besides the, the sort of obvious one is, and that being the huge increase in the volume of attacks, um, and you touched on it, you know, I think it's also probably more alarming for us is the variety and the sophistication of the attacks, you know, the the sort of tooling available and the skills of these hackers. I think that's probably been the most significant change in the in the last three years. Um, I think it's also evidenced by the increase in undetected advanced uh, persistent threats, you know, and, and again, these are not detected by the traditional security technology. They're also, you know, these are the, the threats that you, or breaches that you're unaware of that are actually already in your environment. I think that's probably, you know, area of concern and then I think you know if you look at the landscape last three years I think it's you know the the problems have also been exacerbated by disjointed response you know that siloed technology approach and also you know an ever increasing lack of required skills you know um, to respond to the advanced threats you know the ability to recruit and maintain you know 24 by 7 high level high capability security team I think those are pretty much, you know, in a summary of, of, you know, what we've seen in the landscape in the last three years. Well, it looks pretty scary and, and interesting you mentioned the skills. I mean, whoever you talk to, uh, they say it, the, the, the most challenging part of this whole thing is finding the right skills. There's just no skilled people Absolutely. to bring yeah. into an organization. Now, how is all of this impacting the, the MSS market? Okay, so I think what we're starting to see, we're starting to see an increase in demand for outsourced services again. But I think it's a little bit different this time. I think, you know, clients are no longer requesting broad managed security service capabilities from one specific provider. I think they, they're far more um, specific of the capabilities that they're looking for now. And I think that's been driven by the, the shift of focus from uh, prevention of breaches to the detecting and, and uh, responding to breaches. So, you know, as, as you know, the security perimeter has moved. It's not the network anymore. And obviously, the traditional security technology is not enough. So what we're starting to see, you know, is this focus on specific capabilities. This has really been uh, driven by uh, managed detection and response. We're starting to see, you know, huge uh, growth in uh, in managed security services, but this has been primarily driven by MDR. Um, I think the latest Gartner number I saw the other day, they forecast in the MDR market to be a 2.1 billion market by 2025. And that, you know, that equates to a 20% compound annual growth rate um, from 2021, which is quite huge. Yeah. And I think the other think probably the final thing is, you know, the realization that this problem is a board level issue. You know, it's all about business risk um, identification and business risk mitigation rather than a security problem. Um, Sean, when you look at the, the landscape and you've just, you know, discussed, you know, the managed detection and response 
and these kind of services, uh, it certainly makes a lot of business sense to go this way. Um, can you unpack the benefits that uh, MDR services provide? Yeah, sure, Aki. So I think at a very high level, the first thing is obviously from a business point of view, and again, like I said, you know, this is all about business risk, is, you know, minimizing business impact by disrupting the threats early, you know. So, and the way we do this by, you know, ensuring that the critical threats are prioritized and mitigated first. I think secondly, you know, how the organization can improve their cyber resilience with uh, you know, MDR being a, a turnkey solution and a seamless deployment. So, you know, here, you know, it can be swiftly procured and deployed. It also comes with a standard set of technologies that covers the endpoint, the network, and the cloud. And I think um, something we mentioned earlier about uh, advanced persistent threats, and that's uh, you know the ability to reduce operational risk by detecting threats that were missed by other controls. And here, you know, using AI and ML to provide you know contextualized data for the you know for the analysts and the threat hunters. And then the critical thing is, you know, really gaining threat visibility across your whole, you know, inter your whole entire enterprise. Yeah, and I guess as well is the, you know, the, the, the response time, right? Um, you know, the detection and that faster response time, that's also pretty critical because there's no ways you can do it internally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all about disrupting threats early, but the critical thing is, is how you know, how quickly you can respond and rectify and return it to, to a good state. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sean, there's a lot that's been said, and there's quite a bit of hype around MDR, right? Um, how, how did clients go about choosing a, an MDR partner? Because if you choose the yeah. wrong person, it could go horribly wrong as well. So how do you go about choosing the right partner? Yeah, absolutely. So I think going back to that, that Gartner forecast, you know, the 2.1 billion. So there's, you know, there's a lot of hype there. There's a lot of focus from vendors, from partners, everybody, you know, it's sort of, um, focusing on MDR. So from a client point of view, I think the critical thing there, Aki, is, you know, your partner, you know, whatever partner you choose, they must deliver actionable outcomes. And these are the clearly defined and measurable outcomes. Um, we touched on a little bit earlier, you know, the core buyer requirement is containment of the threat and disruption of the threat. You know, it, it's pointless decreasing the time to detect a threat if you cannot, you know, if you cannot reduce the time to respond and return the organization to a good state. So that's a critical thing is, is the, you know, is the time to contain and respond and return to a good state. And I think also, you know, when you're looking at, you know, at choosing a partner, it's a partnership. You know, we defend together with the client. You know, you need to look at flexible response actions between dimension data and the client because every client is different, different size, different industries, different uh, uh, legislation, etc. You know, and, and to, just to give you an example, you know, of how we, we partner together and, you know, and, and protect together is, you know, where we as a service provider can automatically contain a threat on their behalf. I think also one of the traps that the clients need to avoid, you know, is they need to avoid too wide a data collection, you know, with all the technology mm -hmm. and that. And, and this is where, you know, this is where a partner can really help you focus on your business risk and outcomes, you know, that affect the business, that affect your business outcomes. And, and again, that will ensure that you focus on the right thing, you know, focus on the right areas, prioritize the right threats and, and also, and the right and the response to to the most critical vulnerabilities within your organization, and I think you know, and, and again, you know, over and above uh, the standard MDR service, I think you know, also look at the roadmap of where your partner is going. You know, is your service provider expanding into additional security operational capabilities like DFR? You know, using playbooks and processes for our. And then also, you know, probably the last thing, you know, are they also using validation type capabilities to continuously test the threat scenarios in your environment? And here we're talking about things like breach and attack simulation, et cetera. Yeah, that's the one I was going to raise with you. I mean, the, the simulation is so important because you actually yeah. don't know how you're going to react until it actually happens. Exactly. So when you start practicing exactly. these things, it adds tremendous value. Uh, to how you are, yeah. what your posture is like, what your security posture is like. So you look yeah. at dimension data uh, and your 
MDR service. Uh, what 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 value do you add to your clients in yeah. the in the MIA region? Why dimension data MDR service? Yeah, yeah. So I think I think probably for us, probably from a unique point of view for us operating in the Middle East Africa region is um, is the dimension data MDR service. I think it's a powerful combination of a global standardized platform. And here we're talking about a common delivery platform, a common set of threat intelligence and analytics, and also centralized reporting. But I think coupled with the local skills and knowledge of the unique market and client environments in Middle East Africa. And I think that's a critical differentiator for us. And because of that, our ability to support global and uh, multinational clients within Middle East Africa as well. Okay, well, this is this is a, quite a unique offering, um, and and I guess uh, Sean, when you look at the cost of you know having your own team doing this versus giving it to the guys like Dimension Data, and you've you obviously got tremendous amount of resources and experience. I mean, the, the costs. Uh, how do the co- costs compare either way? So, so again, I think there's cost is one of the things. Actually, I think the thing is the critical thing is again is firstly the cost. The second is the complexity of managing your own. The third thing is again so the complexity and the manageability of it. And and so you know it's a, it's a very flexible it's a very flexible option. And clients, you know, engage with us for MDR for a number of different reasons. You know, they might have their own. Um, they might have their own SOC, but they want to outsource the detection and response capabilities. Uh-huh. They might not have the right skills to do it. They might want to modernize their, their own, you know, th- they might need to modernize their own SOC and the cost of doing that again. And like, you know, going back to that whole thing, you know, you know, sort of a cloud native, um, turnkey, easy deployment, you know, it, it just, it's just, and again, the ability of, of the skills of the threat intelligence of the analytics of the threat hunting capability to build all that in and maintain that internally just doesn't make sense no, absolutely i mean those resources are deep and you've got I, i'm always fascinated i'm trying to imagine what your what your team looks like they probably you know like you see in the movies they're sitting in this in this uh, big room with big screens monitoring everything but of course today there's, uh, you know, everything's happening in the background. You've got sophisticated software running, artificial intelligence, and that sort of thing. I mean, am, am yeah. I am I fantasizing the what the team looks like, or or is it like that? No, and I I think it's probably the opposite. I think it's the the benefit of of MDI is the combination mm. of the technologies like AI and and uh, you know AI and ML. And in the context, but at the end of the day, it's also that human element yes. of the analyst, the, the you know the ability and capabilities of of you know of the threat hunters, and I think that's the powerful combination of the two. Right? No, that's uh, that's really powerful. I mean, this is so interesting to me. Now, what other advice can you give, Sean, on improving the efficiency of organisations' cybersecurity yeah. program? And and I guess uh, yeah. you, you know when you look at that uh, focus, uh, you know, on platform architecture is very important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, and and again, you know, like I said, Aki, I think the number one thing is we need to focus on you know organizational and outcomes, business outcomes, and business risk, and ensure that security is aligned to that. Because otherwise, you know, if they're not aligned, you you know, you just end up spending a lot of money on technology that doesn't give the return to reduce you know reduce the organizational risk and improve the security posture of the organization. So. At, at a very high level, my view is firstly keep it simple. You know, focus on a platform and architectural approach. You know, where security is embedded into you know into the the architecture as opposed to standalone best of breed technologies. And again, it's going to drive your cost complexity and manageability up. And then you know, again, uh, that critical thing of time to respond. You know, going back to that time to respond. You know, invest in security orchestration, automation, and response. You know. You try and automate as much as of your response as possible. And then I think I really touched on it is that alignment between the organizational risks uh, really about platform architecture and automation. Yeah, sure. It's, it's a fascinating industry. And I mean, you've been in it for a while. You've seen some interesting things. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess when you look ahead in the next into the next five years, it, it doesn't seem like uh, security is, go- you know, these attacks are going to, 
become less, right? Because yeah. you're just looking at the numbers, it's just going like this. Yeah. Um, so you've got yeah. to look at uh, MDR and you've got to look at these kind of solutions. I mean, yeah. what's your forecast in the, over the next five to 10 years? I don't see it getting better at all. Yeah. So, and again, I think, like I said, you can see how the market has changed from protection to detect, respond. I think we're going to continue along that path. Uh, again, the, the the critical thing is how quickly, you know, you can isolate and 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 remediate uh, an attack. And I think the critical thing going forward is all around cyber resiliency. You know how how quickly your organisation can continue its day to day operations when it's you know, when it's um, when under attack. And I think that's where the focus is going to be going probably in the next two to three years again is all about, you know, cyber resiliency. Fascinating, fascinating insight. Sean Duffy, Global VP for Security, go to market at NTT. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for joining us on What's Next and sharing those insights with us. It's been a great privilege. I can nice to meet you and uh, catch up with you. Thanks very Likewise. much. Thank you, Sean.